Wyatt Teller was also asked uh, about his extension. Um, here is Wyatt Teller about a potential extension with the Browns. I can't really get too, you know, upset about the business and personal side. I learned that, you know, uh, two and a half years ago when I was when I was traded from uh, from Buffalo, and you know, I thought I was going to be a household name there, and I was traded within, you know, a year, a year and a half. So I realized how how the business side and the personal side, the personal side, you can love that city. You can love those coaches. You can love the, your team, but you're never going to lose that personal side. The business side is what changes. That's why to have the same team over and over again, it's just so rare. It's so hard to do. Um, and I think that that's something special that we have here is, you know, we have such a good team, all the money can't go around. It's just impossible. So I, I think that, you know, understanding that right is, is huge to the business side, right? Like the personal side, I, I love, I love Coach Stefanski. I love AB, and I love I love my teammates. But you know, there's also the business side. You know, I want to you know make the most that I can, right? Because that's really we we make this money for a short amount of time, and half the time, eighty percent of the league, or not more than half, eighty percent of the league is bankrupt after five years. So do it smart. You know, get what you get what you deserve, get what you earn, and you know the rest is the rest can go down as history. And I, Doug, I think. What Wyatt Teller's saying, he may well play himself out of what the Browns can afford to pay him. As as bad as I am talking about contract stuff, that was a tremendous contract answer yeah. by Wyatt Teller. That was really insightful. And he practically said, I will love Cleveland after I'm gone. Like that was the only thing he didn't say in there. He's just going to be... This is the one thing, this is the only thing I've been consistent on with contracts, other than not liking to talk about it. Is I just don't exactly see how they can pay him or how that's where you put the money because there's a couple things at play here. One is that to me is exactly the kind of guy that like a bad team pays, right? That not, And I'm not saying it's a bad decision, but that like, hey, we're three and 14. What can we do? Let's make a splash with a really good guard, right? I just, it just, that I can, I can see a team that's losing, like putting more money out there than the Browns are willing to go. And then the other thing is if you believe Bill Callahan is a offensive line genius, which, you know, you sort of referenced early on, well, do you think he can help coach somebody else up to be really awesome? Like, I, I just don't know. It's not, you can't only judge by where a guy was drafted or whatever, but it's like, why a teller? It's not like it came out of nowhere. And why teller deserves all the credit in the world. He's a, great physical specimen and you can understand why he's a great player but can the browns replicate a version of that with somebody else on the roster with really good coaching rather than paying him a ton i think so get close enough i think you can, you can replicate a wyatt teller more than you can replicate a, a denzel ward or nick chubb or baker mayfield so i thought that was a very honest answer that sounds like he is preparing everybody for the very realistic possibility that he's going to have to go make his money somewhere else but in the meantime, he may as well leave Cleveland with a Super Bowl ring. Yeah, and you know what? He's a really good player, and he made a really valid point. You know, they don't get to make that much money for very long, and um, they got to take the opportunities when they get it.